meet someone, sign a contract. I'm like, are you not going to read it? He said, don't worry, you cannot do anything to me. And he signed, I'm like, bruh, your trust level is here. Distribution like, is where you make it available. That's where you go to the studio, you create it, you put it on that platform where people can actually go and consume it. knows what music distribution is? No? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm trying to not assume that we all know it. So we're just really going to start with that basic. Um, so I'm going to ask Muna. I mean, Muna has been in the industry for, I don't even know if I was born then. But he's been in it for, you know, as long as I can remember. So I'm just going to ask him. Maybe the term distribution, you know, and all the big words confuse people. So Muna is going to explain to us what music distribution is, do you understand? In very, very relatable terms. So, Mona, to, you know, the random guy on the street who just has passion for music, what is music distribution? Um, good evening, everyone. Hello. Okay, so, um, music distribution um, in general is where you have someone like our most famous artist, Magneto, walk into the office, I'm just going to explain it how it's been done here. So I have this song and I want to um, I want to have someone in the UK listen to it. I want to have someone in Afghanistan listen to it. So the first steps we do is we take your track and we distribute it. We put it in different platforms because the word distribution now is, you know, too heavy. We put it in different platforms. When I say put in different platforms, we have different platforms um, which are monetized because every relative artist out there wants to make money out of you know, their works. So we have different platforms where we take your music and we put them in those platforms to make money. Once we put them in those platforms, we, the next step is promotion and the you know, rest of them. I'm not going to go into that right now, but we, put, we take those tracks lyrically and put it in those platforms and make sure that it's on those platforms um, available for everybody that's anywhere else in the world um, to, to have access to. That's basically the layman term of music distribution. Now, I, I feel like um, there's a misconception, especially when it comes to the difference between distribution and promotion. Some people think that promotion is distribution. So I'd really like for that you know, to be cleared out. Um, I'd direct this question at Ugo now. Ugo, what would you say is the clear-cut difference between music distribution and music promotion? Hello, everyone. Well, um, Muna just explained what distribution is all about, so I don't think we should go into that anymore. I believe everybody understands how you can distribute your music online. So let's talk about promotion. For instance, now you're an artist, you come into this company or any other company, and um, you get your music distributed. The next thing we're going to do is to give you what we call the fan link, right? We send that to most of you here. So once you get your fan link, you're supposed to start promoting that link to make sure that people get to know about the songs and the platforms we put your songs in. Let's say the iTunes, Spotify, um, Boomplay, and all of them. So once you have this link, you can either put them on your Instagram page if you're the type that wants to use social media to push your song. You can put it there, run um, sponsored posts, ads like that. And you can do MOVs, promote on social media as well, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Also, you can share this link wherever you can share them online and promote them properly. Then we have blog posts. We can't take the bloggers out of this. You know, you have a new song. What I advise is you don't put... Um, your song for free on the blogs. All you need to do is make sure when you're paying this money to bloggers, you make sure they are posting the fan link. That's what you should be concerned about because that's what generates money back to your account in the first place. We talked about the artist portal, but you need to promote your fan link. That is what brings the money, not giving it to blogs for free. Um, I'd like to add to what Ugo said. Um, I think there are just basically two processes. Distribution, the process for distribution is basically where you take the song and make it available. 
One promotion is where you take the song and make sure people know that it's available. So you give your song, you have your song ready, but nobody knows that this song is available. So you, you, you take it to them and look, this is my song, listen to it. That's the process of promotion. Distribution is where you make it available. That's where you go to the studio, you create it, you put it on that platform where people can actually go and consume it. So you need to understand the difference between both of them. But that's distribution, but that's not promotion. So you can put it on iTunes and it's there and it sits down there for the, the whole of one year and not even one person has heard of it. iTunes is a big store. Everyone is just going to keep looking for what they know. I'll look for Drake. I'll look for something that I know. I won't look for um, Josh, Josh Crazy or something like that. I won't look for him because I don't even know he exists. So that's the process. There are two processes and you need to know those two processes. The process on you know, put it, making your song and putting it out, putting it out for as, um, something that's available and another process where you actually jump into it and make sure that people know that, look, this is my song, listen to it or buy it. Um, I'll direct this question at Ebenezer. What, what would you say is the current state of music distribution in Nigeria today? Digital music distribution. Um, I'm going to try and sound not too smart. Just sound very, very basic so we can all follow. Um, I think... The digital music distribution in Nigeria needs a lot of work, as it is right now, and um, that is that is down to a whole lot of factors that I'm sure during the course of this discussion we're probably going to outline some or all of them. Um, <sighs> where do I go from here? on an international scale, because I am trying to compare what we have with international standards. Um, you go abroad and there's a proper structure for everything from when the music gets to the middlemen, to the aggregators, and to the consumers. But you come into Nigeria and it's like everything is the other way around, right? So I really think that the, the music distribution in Nigeria needs a lot of work and information. I also think that's another problem. The artists don't know a lot of things. And this, is, this session that we organized is supposed to be um, um, one of those educating events to help people know things that they don't know naturally. I don't want to talk too much, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Um. Ugo mentioned something about, you know, blogs and, you know, putting, the blog, putting your songs up on blogs for free. And I, I, I'd like to think that right now, in 2018, that, that's, it depends, to be honest. But I think it's a mistake, you know, especially for artists who, to a great extent, want to make money and not just, you know, get, what's the word now, online fame or, you know, just random fame. So, what would you guys say are the common mistakes that artists make with regards to distributing their music? Jumoke. Okay, um, I'm sure someone here mentioned that I'm a lawyer, so I'm just going to talk from my perspective. That's the legal perspective. I think the underlying factor for everything um, that could end up being a mistake is the fact that people don't pay enough attention to the business of music. Now, music is just the product. The business is how you sell it. Now, speaking from a legal perspective, there are three major things that I, I have noticed in my years of practice within the music industry uh, as the mistakes that most music producers, music uh, creators make when they want to distribute their music. One of them, and the most basic one of them, is not signing contracts. So I know that most of us here are creatives and we thrive on passion, we thrive on exposure and all of that. So in the heat of the moment, you just enter studio, ah, let me just jump on this beat, you know, as they hot, let's do this thing. But you carry your music that you've created, you didn't sign anything with the producer, you didn't sign anything with the, whoever you composed the music with, you didn't sign anything, you just say, okay, this is a track. The producer gives you the track on the flash and then you take it to the nearest store, take it to Alaba, or you take it to a digital store and say, distribute this song for me. 
And then they're like, oh, okay, yes. They want to make, they want to make money, obviously. And then they take it and then they distribute it. And then you find out someone is not remitting or somebody has taken your song and is running wild with it. And you're like, ah, 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 ah. And they're like, sorry, it's not your song. How do you, how do you lay claims to that? You didn't sign anything. You, you didn't clear any rights. You didn't do anything. So most times people find out that someone may have, you know, robbed them of their rights. Stuff, but they don't know what they're signing. So you just come, I have, I have, I'm not, I shit you not, I've seen someone sign a contract, I'm like, are you not going to read it? He said, don't worry, you cannot do anything to me. And you sign, I'm like, bruh, your trust level is here. Like, you have trust, a lot of faith in humanity. It's something that is admirable if you're in church, but when it's time for your business, you cannot play like that. You really can't play like that. You need to know what you're signing. You need to look at the fine print. Like they say, the devil is in the detail. You need to look at, nobody's going to tell you, hi, I need you to sign off your father's house and your land in the village to me. No. They're just going to, they're going to tell you the nicest things on the surface, but then you have to look at it in depth. Everybody, just have the mindset, everybody, nobody is going to treat you like you're going to treat yourself. You need to know what you're signing. That way, you're not looking at unreasonable buyout clauses. You're not, and it's not just in distribution um, agreements. It's in every sphere of your life as an artist. And the third one is no proper documentation. Now, it ties back to the original plan that I said of, um, sorry, the original uh, mistake that I said of not knowing the music business. When you don't have proper documentation for, for your content, you find that it's actually really hard to move ahead. No big label or distribution company wants to touch you with a 10-foot pole because they don't know what kind of legal baggage you're carrying. So when you come and then you just give a track because you're the one that paid for it, you give a track, you didn't sign clearance, you didn't clear any rights, you didn't do anything, and then you just come for it. And then somebody hears a song, and like, ah, that's my verse. Somebody's sampling my song on this, on this track. And then they come and then they sue you, they sue your uncle, they sue the radio station, they sue... The, the village, they sue everybody in your life. And then you begin to think it's village. No, it's not really village people last last. It's something you fail to do. So you neglect all these things and then it comes around and bites you where you don't want to mention, you know, on live TV. So, so all these things are common mistakes that I have noticed happen, uh, you know, in the legal sphere relating to music business. Can I, can I add something? Yes, please. So um, a lot of artists don't know that there's a difference between the music and the business angle. Yes. So, um, if I record a track and I want to distribute it, I expect that I will take my time to look for the best distributor, the best aggregator. Some artists just do a track and they take it and give it to their friend or the guy or someone who's in the studio who says, um... I know one guy that puts a song on iTunes, bring it down, we can put it for you like that. And they just give it to the guy. That's all good, all sweet and nice, but I'd expect that you should do some research. Now, some of these people are not even middlemen. They are probably like the fifth or fourth person in the chain. So they will take it and give it to a guy who will give it to a guy who will give it to another guy before it gets to Freemi Digital. That is detrimental for the business side of your music. So I, I think it's good to do proper research and find out where exactly your music is ending up. I'm sorry, I just want to add another one. I think I have two things. I just want to mention it. I just push it out there because um, we always have these things happen. I feel like it's something some artists should you know, pay attention to. So you start off as an upcoming artist and you, you tell me, you, you walk up to, probably some of them walk up to me and they tell me, you know what, I don't have songs, I don't have uh, money for studio sessions, uh, but I need to do this song. So they jump on the internet and they just go off and see one beat. And they just be like, nah, this beat is nice, I'm vibing to this beat, you know what, and you download the beat. And the next thing, it's easy to record these days, you know, you just plug your mic and all, all, all what sort. You now start vibing and you record on that beat. Then the next minute you bring it to your, your, your uh, aggregator. You say, look, I have this new jam. I need to release this song. You know, it's dope. It's the hottest shit in town. 
and you give it to us. We'll do what we're supposed to do, which is the promise we make. We, keep, we, we, we are giving you. Put it on iTunes. Put it on Spotify. It's not our business. But whoever might have made that beat comes back. That's why we have Shazam. That's why one of the reasons why we play the Shazam game. So you don't hear the beat and Shazam automatically says, oh, someone's actually, you know, using the same beat. And the original owner, probably the producer, he probably wanted to sell the beat. Um, now comes up and he's like, you stole my beat. I'm going to sue you. And they start, you know, fighting us because we've had situations like that a couple of times. So they come back to us and they tell us, look, you're going to pull down this song. Um, for the fact that you've had this song online for like two months, this is your, this is the, fa we don't want to know what records you have, but you know, we're going to sue you. This is our, our buyout clause or something like that. And you start fretting. And now you're an upcoming artist trying to, you know, you don't even have money to even buy this song for yourself. You now have to pay, uh, or you have to go to the, to the courts to pay for that. Those are, that's like one serious mistake I know a lot of artists actually make. And they don't even know that they're making it until they get into it. You know, coming to this event really broadens my mind and, you know, it actually makes me feel like I can run myself without, you know, hoping and sitting down waiting for a record label or stuff. It was really, really, really knowledgeable yeah. and I liked it. Yeah, the, um, the event was interesting. I, I did actually love everything from the beginning. Um, everything I've learned was very, very All right, useful. it was a good event. It was educative. It was a little innovative. It was, I'll say there were a lot that weren't covered based on, let's say, specifics because there was no time. Basically, I learned how to monetize my music. I learned how to promote my music. I learned the, the necessity in not giving out my music for free, you get so. Today's event, I mean, it made a lot of sense and then it answered a um, whole lot of questions I've been trying to ask as well, but then, though I see how other questions I needed to ask, but then uh, I think for, for now, I'm, I'm cool. I actually thought I'm a musician, but when I came today, I come to realize that there is more to be a musician. There is more to it, which is especially knowing the business side of music. It's so, so interesting. Educated right now, <laughs> music-wise, you know, like for upcoming artists, like this is really good. Cause you know, like there's people out there who are just ready to cheat you and also like, I got to hear directly from the source and yes, I'm taking home a whole lot of things today. Well, I would take the thought that, and like the zeal that my music has to be paid for. Like I need to believe that my music can be paid for you know, and go out there and then do it. And yes, believe that Nigeria will change for the better. The reason I say promotion like is that. that it's not just about just releasing your song. It's about the effort you put into um, putting the song out there. There's one thing to distribute and there's another thing to promote. So that's one thing I'm taking out of here today. Yeah, I, work, I enjoy my working relationship with Filmy Digital. Peter has been very, very lucrative. He has, he's with my phone now, trying to do sponsored ad for me, get adverts done for me on YouTube. I'm getting views. Since I joined Freemi Digital, I've gone over 500,000 views on my YouTube, getting to one million. I've never gotten that before, before I met Freemi Digital. Freemi Digital has been awesome. See the relationship, um, relationship be like that I was choosing now. All shots, all videos have been done here in Freemi Digital, and we're getting views getting buzz everywhere. I respect them so much. They're like family to me, and I love you guys.